uh, I want to start by saying, first, congratulations on the show. Um, I cannot wait. I've seen the first three episodes. I cannot wait to watch more. Um, one of the things that uh, early on, there was a lot of talk with the Apple shows that they were going to be very family friendly and it's all PG. And I can assure people with this uh, with this show that this is a, a rated R show. Mm -hmm. This is for, you know, um, I would say there's more for adults. Um, can you sort of talk about that aspect that it's not just aimed at, you know, this has more to it? You know, I, I would say not quite R, but it would certainly be, uh, you know, over, over 10. But life is that way. So I don't think we're presenting anything that life doesn't give. And sometimes young children are having to deal with life. Uh, and it is... Inter interestingly enough, it is absolutely family oriented mm -hmm. because it, it's about family. All kind of things happen in family. And so we are looking at it in a realistic way, especially when family has survived uh, an, an apocalyptic event and it, we're that, that far into the future. So I think you can watch it certainly with, you know, you know 11 year olds who have, who you don't hide things from. For, for both of you, one of the things that really struck me for the show is the level of production design, the yeah. world building. It's tremendous. Can you sort of talk about that aspect of the show and what it was like walking on set for the first time? It was beautiful. Uh, my first day on set was outside of the cave with the rain falling and just being in the elements with my tribe behind me and Paris in the front. And it was really just being on the land with the people, there was a kind of instinctual sense that there is something right about it and natural about it. And that's what I really love about the show is that it's this return to the land and to really the bare bones of human nature and how we interact with each other. Stephen Knight's imagination is limitless and it is uh, explosive and creative. It took the same kind of artist to bring that to a, a, a physicality. And so when I first saw our structures, I practically wept. It was, I couldn't believe how beautiful our, our dwellings were. And then we'd, we'd shoot in it for like two days and they'd tear it down. And then yeah. we'd go somewhere and they'd make something even more beautiful. Uh, that was, you know, um, Caroline Hanina and Hanina and, uh, Trish Somerville, our costumer, they all worked, Nico, Lepage, they all worked very closely with, with Steven and with Francis. It was one team really making that world come to life so that when we stepped into it, you know, we, we I was like, I was work. constantly <laughs> saying, oh, I can't believe this, I can't believe this. I was, I was too excited yeah. every day when they brought us something else, a tool, a costume. Yeah, the, the set design is just so, so, so beautiful. I also walking onto set every day and uh, watching them like take, I was like, we're only here for four days and it's like a whole village. It's so beautiful and big and like detail oriented, like all of the little things that we, uh, without sight, need to navigate through our world. And I was like, well, there's so much here that people will never see. There's like, you And know, they did I, it without nails. It was lashed together. Yeah. And it would withstand hurricanes. Exactly. And our, our tribe, the Alchemy is, uh, weaving tribe so ropes and um and like twine and things those are that's from our environment and it's um that's kind of the basis of our tribe so yeah. one of yeah. the things that I, I little things that i really enjoyed were the way messages are passed with the rope you know mm -hmm. the the lettering and the, mm -hmm. it just was so, so deep and thought out that yes. that's anyway that, so when you world build because your, your viewers are watching it. If you establish a world, you have to be true to that world down to the nth degree. And our production designers and our writers, it, that's, that's the way it had to be. You know, it, but it was challenging, but that's why you get into it, is to be able to focus that way. Completely. Uh, I heard there was a boot camp. And I would imagine sometimes you hear about actors with boot camps and, you you know, is it really necessary, blah, blah, blah. But I would imagine with this one, this was very necessary yes. to learn how to walk, to learn what it would be like without sight. Can you sort of talk about the experience of getting ready for the roles? Well, you know what? 
I, I once did a play in, in Serbo Croatian back years ago. I had three and a half weeks to learn my script. I didn't speak the language, but I was on stage. I learned phonetically what to do. So it would be as if me saying, oh, I'll be in that play Vlost and not speaking a lick of Serbsko Havaski. So we could not come to this work to try to tell this story uh, under, with the predicament that mankind finds itself in 600 years in the future if we did not do, I wouldn't even call it a boot camp. Uh, that sounds like a fitness thing. <laughs> I would call it, no, people call it that, but I would call this more of um, an introduction into the possibility of a language without without sight as we know it. Mm -hmm. Completely yeah. necessary. It was, it was absolute, and I, I'm really grateful for the space that, um, that Fran Francis Lawrence asked for this time before we started shooting so that we could get to know this world and the characters and the way that we moved about the space before we even got on to the camera and that's what um, I think is so special about the show is that it feels authentic in that way. What we mainly discovered was a respect yeah. for people who, who, who move about in the world without vision as we know it, mm -hmm. as we talk about it. I have to stop there. Again, congratulations. I cannot wait to finish up the season. Oh, okay. excellent. Have a fantastic... I've only seen three as well. <laughs> I'm excited. I got, I